In today's video, we'll explore how to apply a dynamic fallback image in our product loop grid using the dynamic shortcodes plugin. I'll show you how to do it both in Elementor as well as in Gutenberg. So if that's something that interests you, stick around and we'll jump right into it. The main plugins we'll be using today are WooCommerce to create the products, Elementor Pro to create the product loop grid, dynamic shortcodes for the dynamic fallback image, and generate blocks for the Gutenberg version. We'll be looking to solve three problems in today's video. The first is, how can we dynamically retrieve an image from the product gallery? The second problem is, how can we add a dynamic fallback to the featured image? And finally, how can we nest our fallbacks? So for example, let's say your client, for some products, he set the product gallery, but he forgot to set a featured image. Then maybe for some, he only has a product gallery, no featured image. We can fall back to the product gallery. And finally, let's say he forgot to set both of them. Then we fall back to a static image. Or we can also fall back to another dynamic image, maybe an ACF field or something like that. That's the beauty of this plugin is that you can literally nest fallbacks within fallbacks within fallbacks and you can do some complex conditions using dynamic shortcodes. So now, let me show you what I mean. As you can see, two of them don't have product featured images and then I think in some of them, I forgot to add both the featured image and the product gallery so that's why this one is blank. If you go back, this one has the product gallery but no featured image so that's why it has a product gallery but no featured image the client probably forgot to set a featured image then this one has the featured image but no product gallery and so on so basically there's a combination of all of them so now we want to see how we can do this first in Elementor then in Core Gutenberg so here we are on our Elementor edit page to speed up the process, I've already gone ahead and I've created a loop grid widget and I've added in a template into the loop grid widget which I populated with an image, the product title and the price. So now let's look at the first easy example which is just pulling in the featured image into the loop grid. So I'll click on the image. When you hover over the choose image, you see the option for dynamic tags. When I choose that, then I can choose the featured image that will populate it with the featured image. In the event that we don't have a featured image, I can come to the wrench icon. Then there's an option for fallback. But that fallback is only for a static image. As you can see, if I hover over the choose image, it doesn't give me the option for dynamic image. So all I can do is choose a static fallback image. So let me show you first without the fallback. Let's publish it. Then save and back. You see that now some products have images while some don't have images and it looks weird. But now we want to add in a fallback. So let me go in the loop grid, choose the image again, choose the wrench icon, then this time choose a fallback. So let me use this, select it. Then now if I save and back, you notice that those two images now are populated with the fallback image and which is all fine and good so we always have a fallback of a static image but now let's see how we can take it a step further now we don't want to just pull in the featured image we want to pull in the first image in the product gallery how can we do that let's go back and edit the template and see if elemental has that option so let me click on the image again remove the featured image and this time choose the dynamic tag so you can see, unfortunately, Elementor doesn't have by default to pull in the first image from the product gallery. All you have here is the product image, which basically all it does is that it allows you to choose a specific image. In case you don't have the correct product image, you can now pull in, let's say, for the Vans. Just search for Vans. Choose that. And it will pull in that image from a different product. But that's not what we want in this case. We want to pull in from the product gallery, one of the images. 
So that's where the dynamic shortcuts plugin comes in. So let me exit out of this. Now I'll choose the dynamic tags again. If you have the dynamic shortcuts plugin installed, I'll leave a link to how you can download it in the description. Then you can go over to the dynamic U dynamic shortcuts, choose that, then click on the wrench icon. As you can see from the description, the main thing Elementor is looking for is the ID of the media file. So what we're looking for is how to dynamically retrieve the ID from the product gallery and then the first image in the product gallery. So if we are in doubt, we can go to the demo shortcode. So you have to just go to the dynamic shortcodes, demo shortcodes. I'm looking for a WooCommerce product. So we'll go to Woo. Then I'll just search for an example here. So let me say Nike. Choose Nike. And the main thing we're looking for is the gallery. So let me search for gallery. So this is the shortcode we're going to use, which is Woo Gallery Image IDs. And it's going to give us an array, but we need just the ID of one of the images. So first we copy this. We paste that in there. It will give you an array, so that's why it's going to give an error. So now we just want to retrieve one of the images from the array. So we use the access, which is the double pipe symbol. And then we want to choose the first image there in an array the first starts from zero, so we can just say zero. And it retrieves the first image from the product gallery. If we want the second image, we can say one. And that will retrieve the second image from the product gallery. But in this case, I just want the first one, so that will be zero. Then the problem with this is that, let me now publish it and exit. This leads to the second problem. Some of the images have the product gallery image, others don't. So you see this one has, the other one doesn't have, so it has a broken image symbol. The next one has, and that's how you keep getting different ones. So now comes the next problem. We want to now have a dynamic fallback. So rather than having this broken symbol, we want to have a fallback to the featured image if there is no product gallery. So let's go back. One way we can achieve this is by duplicating the image and using dynamic conditions. So if you have the latest version of Elementor, you can go under Elementor settings and features and then activate dynamic conditions or use a separate plugin like the dynamic visibility for Elementor by the same company, Dynamic U. Then all you need to do now is for the first image, you go under advanced, then under dynamic conditions, and then we choose Add condition, then we'll set the condition to featured image and say if the featured image is set, it should display the first image. Then for the second one, we we'll say on the advanced tab, dynamic conditions, add condition. This time we we'll say if the featured image is not set, display the second image. Let me now go ahead and change the first image to the featured image actually. So under the content, let me delete this. Choose the dynamic tags again, and then just choose the featured image. So now we have the featured image and the other one. So let me publish, then save and back. And you see now, if there is a featured image, shows the featured image. Otherwise, it shows the product gallery whenever there is no featured image. But then we have the next problem is we don't have that static image, which is easily fixed by going back to the images, then setting both of them to always fall back to this image. For the second one too, we can do that. And then you will always have that fallback. So when there is no featured image, you should fall back to that static image. But rather than doing all of this stressful thing, we can do everything from one widget. So let me delete this image. And then we'll come back to this product gallery image. I'll go back to the content, the wrench icon. For adding fallbacks to the dynamic shortcodes, the syntax is using the question mark symbol. So all we need to do is right before the end of the curly brace, we just add in the question mark. Then we need to impute an ID again. So we can either use a static ID like 116 or we use another dynamic tag to pull in the ID. So we want to pull in the ID for the featured image in this case. 
So let me go ahead and delete this static number. Then we can go to the demo again in case we are stuck. And this time I'll search for featured image. So this is the syntax for featured image. So let me just copy that. This time it's, it's pulling in the ID directly. So we don't need to do anything extra. So let me just copy this and then go back to the image. Then paste that in. So that's it. We can now go ahead and look at it at the front end. But first, let me go ahead and remove that dynamic conditions we set. So under the advanced tab, dynamic conditions, let me get rid of it. Save and close. Publish it. And then save and back. As you can see now, we get the gallery image first. If it doesn't have a gallery image, then it falls back to the featured image. But then we have one more problem that when it doesn't have both of those, it now creates a blank space because this one doesn't have both the gallery image as well as the featured image. So we can easily remedy this by doing the nested fallback. So go back in there. This is the power of this dynamic shortcode. You can either use another dynamic tag as a fallback or this time you can use a static number. So let me come to this image, then go to the content, the wrench icon, this time I'll go into where the ID stops. That is for the nested dynamic shortcode. And within that one, I'll now add in another fallback. So I'll put question mark there. And this time I'll say maybe 116, I believe, which you can find by going to the media. Then I'll choose, maybe this was the media. The value there is, I think, 110. So let me just copy that. That's the value we need. So come back here, and that is what I'm going to use here as the fallback. So now everything is complete. So publish, and then save and back. As you can see now, when we don't have any image at all, it falls back to that image. When we have the product gallery image, that's what shows. If we don't have the product gallery, it shows the featured image and we are all set. Everything is basically wrapped up together. And we can also add in some more powerful conditions because the Dynamic Shortcodes plugin has a lot more conditions, which you can set. Let me search for it here. As you can see, you have a lot of conditions. Let me go to the docs. You can use an if statement if you want. You can create so many different conditions, wrapping, so many things together and then you come up with a powerful condition. You see, as you can see, there are practical examples. So let's say if there is an ACF field set, do this. If it's not set, do that. So rather than just using fallbacks, you can create your own conditions. Let's say, for example, let's say you have a grid of product taxonomies this time and then you want to set the condition that if the product taxonomy doesn't have a category image, fall back to the product image for the shoes only, but for the other one, fall back to something else. So you can start nesting conditions together and then you come up with something so beautiful and all your users have to do is impute their data. They don't have to worry about anything. You set the conditions to be basically foolproof as much as you can. Then you know that like in directory listing websites, you don't have power over how your users impute their data. So sometimes a user might forget to put in one image, you might remember to pull in the gallery image, you might forget to put in any image at all, and so many things can happen. But when you're now setting so many conditions like this, you are now sure that at least there will always be a fallback in case the user forgets to put in the required details. So that's how powerful the Dynamic Shortcodes plugin is. Now that we've seen how to do it in Elementor, it's a very similar thing within Gutenberg. So to speed up the process, I'll just go ahead and copy this tag that we used here because we're going to just reuse the same tag inside Gutenberg. So let me go ahead, copy everything. Now let's go to Gutenberg and see how we can do the same thing. So here we are in the block editor. To make my life easier, I'm using Generate Blocks, the free version. So let me go ahead and add in a container. Then within the container, I'll drop in the query loop block, which is similar to the Elementor's loop grid. So I'll click the plus icon, choose the query loop. I'll choose 
this example because it has an image already. So now we have image, the title, and this date. I don't need the date, so let me delete that. The next thing you need to do is choose the right query source. So I go to query loop, change it from posts to products. So now it's pulling in the featured image for the product. But now we want to have that same condition that we had in the Elementor. So we want it that the first thing you should pick is the product gallery's first image. If it doesn't have that, then pull in the featured image. If it doesn't have that, then pull in a static image. So we use the same thing that we copied from Elementor, which is that short code. Now come to this image. Right now, if you go to the dynamic data, because I'm using the free version, all I can get is the featured image and avatar for the author, which is not what I need here. So I'll disable that completely. Then I'll come over to insert from URL. The nice thing about dynamic shortcodes is that it can pull in dynamic data into anywhere within the editor. So within this URL now, we use the dynamic shortcodes here. So the one that I copied, so just paste that in here. But right now, this shortcode is retrieving the ID. But what we want in this case is the URL, not the ID. So what we do is we use another shortcode to pull in the WordPress native function. So what I mean is I will pull this ID into the identity shortcode. So what this identity shortcode is just basically doing is it's taking the value you give it and returning that same value. But that now gives you an option to use any filter that you want. So for the filter that I'm using here, it's a native WordPress filter, which is you start with the pipe symbol to start your filter. And what I'm doing is WP get that's all of with underscores attachment underscore URL. Then if I like, I can choose the exact one I want. So let me see if I want the large. I choose large inside the brackets. Then I have to close the shortcode. So I'll close it with the curly brace. And that's it. So let me press the enter key. Let me now set it so that maybe I don't want to, I want it to be three items. So under the post template, change the width from 50% to maybe 33%. So I get three items. The limitation with the block editor is that the dynamic data doesn't show in the block editor, but it will show on the front end. So I can now go ahead and update this post and preview on the front end. The design will not look nice, but you can see. First, we get the product gallery image. If that doesn't exist, then it falls back to the featured image. But if it exists, it goes back to the product gallery image. And if any of them doesn't exist, then it falls back to the static image that we got. To prove the point, you see this is the product gallery. Let me show you. Go in here. You can see that's the, I think this was the third image. See, it doesn't have a featured image, but it has a product gallery image. So that's why it's pulling in the product gallery image for this example. Then for the last one, which is the working stylish shoes, that one has neither the product gallery image nor the featured image. So that's why it's defaulting back to the static image. As you can see, that's the last one there. I forgot to set both the product image, which is a featured image, and the product gallery image. So that's why it's falling back to the static image. And that's how easy it is to create fallbacks, which are one dynamic and two nested. So you have a fallback within a fallback. This is something that's even missing within Bricks as well. Bricks doesn't have this currently. You can't have dynamic fallbacks, but with dynamic shortcuts plugin, it gives you the ability to have dynamic fallback images in whatever page builder you're using that it supports. Currently, they have still an issue, so it doesn't support Bricks yet. But hopefully, in the future, there will be an integration with Bricks, and then to be able to support Bricks as well, and you can get the fully featured dynamic data from dynamic shortcodes inside Bricks. So thanks for watching. I hope this video has been enlightening, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>